Hey everybody, welcome back to Managerial Accounting. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at manufacturing costs. And so if you've ever wondered how a company like Nike keeps track of the cost and what it takes to make their product, then today's video is for you because we're gonna talk about the different categories of product cost and how they come together to come up with a total manufacturing cost. It's a big topic. It's an important topic because if Nike doesn't know what it costs them to make a sneaker, they run the risk of maybe selling it for too low. Kind of crazy to think, right? Because Nike shoes are so expensive anyway. Uh, maybe not a big risk at Nike, but for the most part, businesses have to understand what it takes to make their product from a cost standpoint. That way they can price it accordingly. If they price it too low, you're going to lose money. If they price it too high, a competitor might come in and take your business, okay? So manufacturing costs are important. We need to know how to track them. We need to know what goes into them. A lot of what we're talking about today, we're going to apply to the uh, Nike sneaker example. But if you'd rather kind of apply it to something you might be more familiar with or more into, maybe uh, if you're a musician, guitars, maybe if you're a fashionista, blue jeans, uh, cell phones, whatever kind of product you want to visualize, this will apply. Not only that, a lot of what we're going to talk about in the context of manufacturing costs also apply to a service firm. So maybe you're a real estate major and you want to open your own real estate firm one day. It's the same idea, uh, only we're going to apply to a service instead of a product we're creating. So very important topic. I'm excited to get into it and share it with you. And we're going to kick it off right here and learn about manufacturing or product cost. Like I said, we use Nike as our example and we'll talk about what goes into manufacturing that sneaker at Nike from a cost standpoint. I will be discussing three components of product cost. There are three components. Uh, product cost, we have direct material, direct labor, and factory overhead. And what happens is we add the three together. Direct material plus direct labor plus factory overhead equals our total product cost or manufacturing cost. So our goal in the video today is not only understand that we got to add three components together, to get manufacturing cost, we also want to be able to understand what is direct material? What's included? What's direct labor? What's factory overhead? Once we understand that, we'll have a pretty good handle on manufacturing cost. Hopefully. So direct material, to break down every one of those components on its own, direct material is our raw material that goes directly into making the final product, okay? So to be direct material, the cost of the material has to be vital to that finished product. It also has to be a significant portion of the overall product cost. And so two criteria there, to be included in direct material, the cost of that material and the material itself has to be vital to the finished product and it has to be a significant portion of the overall product cost. So as we're looking at our sneaker here, we got our uh, Air Max 95 Wild West pack or on the screen there, we've got some Air Max 90s. If you're a, a sneaker head like I am, uh, talk about what goes into making that. As far as direct material, we probably got rubber involved. We probably got foam in the bottom. What makes Nike so comfortable, right? All the foam there in the bottom. I got plastic involved. We probably have a little bit of fabric in there as well. So all of those items are going to be raw material that go directly into the product. And so that meets part one of our definition. Part two, all of those probably represent a significant portion of the final cost of that product as far as getting it made. Okay, so direct material. 
And again, if you wanted to take other examples of things you're familiar with, you can think of a vehicle, the material that goes into making a vehicle. Uh, you can think about your iPhone, the material that goes into making the iPhone. And it's pretty easy to see what direct material is. Now there's one more item that probably goes into making that shoe that I didn't include in direct material. That's glue. And to make a shoe, there's a little bit of glue that goes along the bottom there that attaches the upper to the lower part of the shoe. Just a couple of drops all the way around. And so that's definitely a raw material that goes into the production. It's vital to the production, but that second criteria, a couple of drops of glue probably isn't going to be a significant portion of that product cost, right? It's just a couple of drops of glue. So to waste our time tracking it per shoe, per product, it's probably not going to be worth the time and effort to do that. Not a significant portion. So glue would be considered an indirect material. It goes into the product, sure, but the cost is so insignificant that we really wouldn't consider it direct material. As we'll find out in a second, all the indirect material gets dumped into overhead. We'll get to that point in a minute. Direct labor, exact same idea as raw material, but only now we're talking about the labor involved. So our direct labor, cost of the labor or the wages of the people who are working directly on that product and creating the final product. Exact same criteria to be included in direct labor. The labor has to be a vital part of the finished product. They are touching the product. They're working on it on the line. The labor also has to be a significant portion, the total cost of the product. And so if we're talking about Nike and the shoes, you know they probably have an assembly line, people working on that product. You know, maybe they have people working on the stitching. Maybe they have people working on uh, assembling the different components. Those people who are working directly, their wages, are going to be included in direct labor. So we have direct material, we have direct labor. If the product cost doesn't fall into those two categories, guess what? We're talking overhead. And this is kind of the tricky part to account for. Factory overhead, all the cost other than direct material and direct labor. So if it's something that's needed to manufacture that product, but we can't trace it directly to the product, then it becomes overhead. And some examples here. Think of our factory building for the shoes here. Imagine a factory building cranking out Nike shoes. I don't like that line there. It keeps putting a crazy line in there if I write on that monitor. So I'll pull it on the other side here. So our factory building, okay? Some cost involved there. We have utilities in that building. Water, electric, heating, all of those utilities. We have to have them to be able to make the shoes, but they're not really directly related to the shoes. I can't take a kilowatt of electricity and tie it directly to a shoe being made, <laughs> okay? And so utilities would be an example. What about insurance on that factory building? Have to have it, but it doesn't really tie into directly with that shoe coming off the line. We a depreciation. We depreciate our sewing machines. We depreciate other factory equipment. Got to do it. We had to buy those machines, but it doesn't really tie into the end product coming off of the line nice and neat. So it is considered overhead. Maybe I have a, a factory supervisor. They get paid a salary. 
again, we got to have a supervisor in that factory, but their salary doesn't really apply to a product coming off the line directly. What about maintenance and janitorial people and their wages? Right? Got to have them. Got to have maintenance in the building, but they aren't touching that product. So we can't consider the maintenance wages direct labor. Janitorial custodian wages. We can't consider that direct labor. They're not working on the product, but we have to have them in that factory building. So all that gets dumped in something we call overhead. And then we'll kind of allocate it to the shoes after we dump it in this big overhead bucket. That's a topic for another video. I mentioned indirect material like the glue. That would also be considered overhead. Right? So, keeping track of overhead is the hard part. Direct material, direct labor, it's obvious in, in, to put that to the product because that's basically the raw material that's going into the product, the labor that's touching the product. That part's easy. It's the overhead part, making sure we gather up all the appropriate overhead costs and get them to the product. That's the tricky part. And again, I want to point out, I, I specified the factory building. If we had a separate building for sales, administrative, management people, accountants, all those people, that's not part of the product cost. Okay, the product cost is simply what it takes to get the product from raw material into a finished state. And that doesn't happen in the office building. It happens in the factory. So only these costs related to the factory are being considered. That's a very important point you need to keep in mind. Direct material, direct labor, factory overhead, the trinity of product costs. Let's look at a, a little practice example here. You got Crest, you got Procter & Gamble, and that's their toothpaste division. And we're wanting to classify their cost as direct material, direct labor, or factory overhead. And so I'm going to give you a second, maybe you can jot these down and think about them a little bit, and then I'll share the correct responses with you. So take a moment, think about those, and then we'll see what we got. Okay, hopefully you've had an opportunity to look at the different costs here and classify them accordingly. If we're looking at Procter & Gamble and their toothpaste division or factory, the tubes on the toothpaste would probably be considered direct material. Depreciation on the production equipment would be factory overhead. On the toothpaste building, what we depreciated would be considered factory overhead. Maintenance supplies, got to have them not directly related to the product, factory overhead. Packaging department employee wages, direct labor, right? directly related to the product. Plant manager salary, factory overhead. And then finally, fluoride and other ingredients on the, the toothpaste, direct material, uh, assuming that that would be a substantial cost uh, uh, compared to the product cost overall. So. Our manufacturing cost, what you need to remember, product cost, manufacturing cost is always going to be the sum of direct material, direct labor, and factory overhead. All three added together. I mentioned that factory building and how everything that happens in that factory building is a product cost. Direct material, direct labor, factory overhead, those are your product costs. When we put all those together into a finished product, it goes on the balance sheet as inventory. Those administrative costs related to that office building, selling expenses, marketing expenses, uh, management expenses, administrative expenses, all that stuff, not directly related to the production of a product. So we call those period costs. And all those go on the income statement as expenses when they happen. So our product costs get carried on the balance sheet as inventory until the product sold. Period costs, all the selling and management and general expenses go on the income statement when they happen as expenses. 
So our takeaways from our video here, you need to be able to distinguish between direct material, direct labor, and overhead. You also need to understand the difference between product and period cost. And we kind of went through that in 15 minutes. And so if you're a little bit scared, like, I don't know if I got it down yet, don't worry. You'll have plenty of opportunities to practice in our homework problems on Cengage. And I'm going to give you unlimited check your works. And so you're going to have plenty of opportunities to get down what you need to get down. We've got a few more videos where we talk about manufacturing costs, especially that overhead part. I hope to see you back here from those, uh, for those, I should say. If you have any questions or any problems, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to help.